Oh my gosh, it's about to start. One of the ways that I believe people express their appreciation to, to the rest of humanity is to make something wonderful and put it out there. Hello, Peachy fan. It's been a minute. I have actually been sick with the flu for about a week now. So apologies for the slack on the videos and the podcast, but I am back on the Daily Peach tonight and every day because it's the Daily Peach and also new videos coming at you this week. Thank you guys so much for the well wishes, but I just finished the Apple keynote. I was live tweeting the entire thing. Those things are so exciting for me because I'm an Apple fangirl. I'll admit it. It's just so good to see y'all's faces again. It truly is. So the first half of this video is going to be talking about the Apple event, the new iPhone, the iPhone X. And then if you're clicking on this video at a later time and you just want to know what are the best dongle options for your new MacBook Pro, you can go ahead and skip to this time. Let's get into it. I'm going to kind of recap the event just in case if you missed it and then sprinkle in my thoughts and opinions. Along with the new Steve Jobs Theater and insanely humongous new Apple headquarters, Apple is pushing their retail stores to be more of a community center. They're calling them town squares. They want areas for people to just come and sit and hang out or develop a new app or of course get some help from the Genius Bar. I think this is genius because they're creating an experience. They're creating community and the more people in your store, outside of your store, plotting how to change the world and your own devices, the more customers you're going to have for life. Apple Watch Series 3 now has cellular, so you no longer have to be connected to your phone. I can now access Apple Music's entire catalog just with my Apple Watch. If I want to go outside and run and I have my AirPods, it's perfect, but for me, it's not really 100% necessary yet for me to do an upgrade because I have the Apple watch ceramic and it is just gorgeous and I love it I don't think it's a necessity like the Apple AirPods I think the AirPods are the most game-changing thing Apple has released in a very long time but if you've been thinking about getting the Apple watch and you haven't made that plunge maybe right now is the time to do it now that it has cellular it truly would be so weird to just not have your phone on you and to just make a call to someone without your phone. Just wait until this is our entire phone and we just press a button, there's a heads up display and we like tap things in the air and that's exciting. I want that, I want that iPhone. There is a new 4K Apple TV and it features HDR images. Ooh, pretty, more pixels, more clear, more pretty pixels. Yeah. There's a new iPhone, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. They went ahead and skipped the S. And I'm going to be honest, all of these leaks happening right before the events kind of ruined the wonder of everything because I feel like we already know pretty much everything before the event. But the coolest thing that I got out of this are the new glass casings that will allow you to wireless charge. So instead of plugging in your phone, you're just going to drop your phone on a wireless charging mat and you're there. With the last iPhone update came a amazing camera feature called portrait mode where you take a picture of a person or a thing and it makes the background all fuzzy and bokeh-licious just like you're shooting with a DSLR camera. Well they're stepping it up in that realm and now there's a thing called portrait lighting where your camera in real time automatically analyzes all of these details of the light hitting people's faces and you can scroll through options of real-time lighting adjustments that your camera can captures the subject with. It's it's kind of mind-blowing. And of course, augmented reality was brought up many times. They should a demo of a AR video game. I'm not super interested in video games, so I'm more excited where all of this technology is going to lead developers in new apps. Speaking of AR, we now have animated emojis where I can take my voice and my facial expressions and send my friend a animated emoji of me talking and doing my facial expressions expressions as a unicorn or as a fox. Exciting times, people. They closed up the event with the most exciting announcement and something people have been anticipating for a long time, the iPhone X. Tim Cook said iPhone 10, but people are calling it just the iPhone X. There's no more home button and the screen spans from top to bottom, side to side. When I saw the video and for the first five minutes of them talking about it, I didn't even think of specs or anything. What I thought about was, oh my gosh, this is my white iPhone. So yes, the sides are beautiful and silvery and such, but the back of it, I've seen from pictures and video, is just straight up white, my dream 
would be to have a white ceramic iPhone to match my watch. I was freaking out on the aesthetics from the moment I saw it. I was like, oh, it's gonna match everything so well. I'm a very silver slash white person. Well, yes, I'm actually a very white person, if you can tell. It is an OLED display, 5.8 inches. Super retina display, whatever that means. It's super, super retina. And with this thing, since there's no home button, you gotta be a gesture ninja. How you unlock the phone is face ID. Swiping up is your new home button and to get to control center you just swipe down 12 megabyte dual cameras the first camera is a f 1.8 aperture the second camera is a f 2.8 aperture and the difference between the final cut final cut <laughs> nope the difference between the 10 and the 8 plus is that the second camera on the iPhone 10 has optical image stabilization where on the 8 plus only that first camera does and last but certainly not least we now have portrait mode selfies. You can now take that beautiful, ooey gooey, mushy, bokeh-licious portrait mode picture using your front-facing camera. So which iPhone are you gonna get? Sarah, I'm definitely going to get the X. I do everything other than editing videos on my iPhone. Even a lot of the photography I do is iPhoneography, and so the iPhone is such a crucial part of me making and sharing content. So it's not only the center of just me being social and being able to communicate with my friends and family, which is awesome, but it's also the center of my business and kind of the center of me. I feel like our phones are the center of us. So I can vouch for that price just because it is, I would say, my number one tool. But I think this shift recently is so interesting. It seemed like everyone was good with this upgrading once every two years, but I feel like it has really shifted now where everyone needs a new phone every single year. And honestly, I don't know if that's a good thing, but I guess it makes sense because technology is moving so fast. We always have to have the newest and latest and greatest, especially for creators. But at the same time, that's so much money. You're talking about spending 700 to a thousand, twelve hundred dollars every single year. Now your phone is probably the number one most important thing that you have in your life that isn't like a human. So maybe it makes sense, I don't know. What are your thoughts on this whole, now everyone has to upgrade every year. How often do you upgrade? I wanna know your thoughts. If you miss the keynote and you're a big Apple fan, I would encourage you to go and watch all of their ads. If you admire filmmaking in the slightest, your jaw is just gonna be dropped. They are just gorgeous and they incite this feeling in you of like, yes, yes, I need that. <laughs> okay, I feel like I've talked enough. If you're curious about my MacBook setup and what dongle you should get, it's time for that. What are dongles? Dongles. This right, I'm okay. This right here is my computer setup. I have the new 2017 MacBook with the KB Lake processor hooked up to my Thunderbolt 27 inch Apple Cinema displays. So the two questions I get all of the time is, one, the new MacBook, it is missing a ton of ports. It only has four USB ports. How are you hooking up your cinema displays? Is it working? And number two, what is the best solution to plugging in all of your devices, all of your things into your MacBook when there's literally only USB-C inputs? So straight off the bat, how I plug my MacBook into my Thunderbolt displays. And I'll link everything, the stand, in the description below. This is the power. This is a USB-C to 3.0 dongle plugged in to my USB 3 hub and this is how I plug in SD cards when using this setup and on the other side of things we have two USB-C to Thunderbolt dongles that plug straight in to the monitors so when it comes to dongles and hyperdrives and just the accessories that you need just to have a functioning computer what are your options and what is the best And so that's why we have to deal with the dongles. Sounds like a sitcom, doesn't it? Dealing with the dongles. 
Sounds kind of weird too. My go-to setup and my number one recommendation is the Hyper Drive. So it comes in this leather case. It plugs directly into your computer and looks so smooth. It's the same exact color as your MacBook, so it almost seems like an extension of it. It takes up two of your USB-C inputs, but it is worth it because you get two USB, SD, and micro SD. You get your two USB-C ports back, and also on the top is a HDMI. So it looks the cleanest, it is super functional, I have been using it the entire time I've had this MacBook and it has every port that you will need. So to achieve what you can do with this, with Apple dongles, you would need this one and this one and another dongle for SD cards. What I'm trying to say is this makes no sense. Resist the Apple dongles. Something similar to the Apple Drive that you can find on Amazon is something like this, the Lintion adapter, but it doesn't have as many ports and also it doesn't rest flush against your MacBook. It has this wire so it just hangs and you have to, it's, it's just very inconvenient. You don't get back another USB-C and you don't have an HDMI input. Hyperdrive. Amazon one. In terms of performance, they perform exactly the same. I can dump an SD card footage using these and it gets to my computer in the same amount of time. So it depends. If you need a quick one from Amazon, you could go with something like this. Your long-term solution should probably be something like the hyperdrive. The last thing that I'm going to show you is what I opened up in my last video that I didn't want to show you yet. It's this crazy thing. It's called dock case. So basically what this is, is it's a case for your MacBook, but all of the inputs that you need and all the dongle options are at the end. So this is actually a Kickstarter project and guys, I get so many emails in my email about Kickstarters. Half of them are for electric skateboards and if I did videos on all the Kickstarter emails that I got, oh my goodness, it it would be a lot. But this is the first one that actually caught my eye. I was like, wow, that's actually a fantastic idea. Oh, I have to go to the coffee shop, so I'm just gonna put my MacBook in this nice leather case and not worry about bringing dongles because my case is a dongle. This feels so weird. I'm putting an SD card into my case. Okay, and it popped up. Pretty clean look. Once you're done, you pack it on up, put this cable in your case and you're good to go. I want to get one of my hard drives. Open up a Premiere file and just make sure that this connection can Hold up. All right, so it's playing smooth from the USB drive. So actually, freak yeah, I would recommend this. It's genius. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, let me know by smashing that like button and smashing that subscribe button. Get on new videos every single week and become a part of the Peachy fam. We're super creative around here and want you to be a part of the family. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't yet, but stay peachy. Okay, bye.